service tech video from Nortech. We're going to show you the proper way to replace the bearing insert. Okay, here's the housing with the bearing insert in there already. First off, we're going to take the collar off. That's just simply removing it from the assembly. Okay, now we're going to, we've already got the bearing removed from the housing and we're going to show you the proper way of installing it. First we're going to explain the insert. The insert has a stake pocket here. Not all bearing inserts will have that. Generally speaking high quality high quality bearings will have that stake pocket in there. Then you notice there's this grease channel this grease channel. Okay, let's bring the housing in, Alan. Kind of bring it up to where I can uh, point out the, the grease fitting. Point out the grease fitting. Here's the grease fitting, which is going to allow grease to go into this grease channel, and it's going to circulate the bearing. So when you put a, a shot of grease in there, it's going to go through this grease channel, and then it's going to find its way to the grease hole. I don't know if you can see it on the video. Can, can you point to this grease hole? There's a little grease hole in there. And what that grease will be forced into the bearing then. So now, here's where things get a little tricky. You've got to line up that grease channel with the grease channel within the housing. I don't know if you can see it on the video, but there is a grease channel, much like what's on the bearing here. And them two have to mate up. Now, if you happen to reverse it, which is very easy to do, guess what? There's no grease going to the bearing, because it does not have a grease channel to actually uh, uh, funnel the grease into the bearing hole. So it's very important to find the grease slot, the grease slot in the assembly, the grease slot in the assembly, and match it up. Okay, I had to redo this one footage. Didn't quite turn out correctly on uh, material. And you may see a casting number on the bearing. That really doesn't mean anything. Um, what is so misleading is that casting number is just a casting number. That is the mold. Now, what kind of material do they put in there? Is it pig iron, cast iron, ductile iron, stainless steel? They're, they use this mold for many, many different uh, applications. Now, for example, when you go from pig iron or cast iron, to ductile iron, ductile is about three times more expensive, but it's about five times more durable, impact resistant. Nortec does use ductile. Okay, one other thing is we take the grease fitting out and we actually plug it with a brass fitting. Brass because it will not rust or seize into the cast iron material. Now, the reason we plug that is the environment that this bearing is working in, that grease fitting could either get knocked off, damaged, that little ball on the top, letting moisture and sand and dirt in, which will take out a bearing insert. So that's the reason for the plug. The grease fitting. We recommend changing out the grease fitting when you do change out the insert. And the reason being is that on top of the grease fitting, there is a little poppet ball. And this ball can get either war or maybe a grain of salt in there, salt, sand, that will allow it to stay open. And if it stays open, then dirt, moisture can get inside the bearing assembly. The other thing is, have you ever had a, 
a grease gun where you're greasing your machine and it, you really got to put the pressure on it. Or sometimes you can't even grease it. Well, it's because inside that grease fitting, the grease has dried up and uh, is now hardened. So it's not letting the grease flow through the grease fitting. So we do recommend for the little bit of cost of a brand new grease fitting, replace the grease fitting at the same time. Here's a tool that we made for inserting inserts. It's got some leverage to it. It's not the exact size, but at least it, uh, it will give us leverage to uh, put into the uh, bearing insert. You'll see that once we start inserting it. Now, you necessarily get the pipe just a regular pipe that's all you need in fact hardwood uh, anything that is somewhat close to the diameter of the bearing insert will work okay now we're gonna insert the bearing into the housing is that stake pocket lined up okay yeah yes it is you're good you're good now uh, start turning it Okay Good good uh, now we we preset the bearing inside the housing We've got the stake pocket to where we're not trying to jam it into the housing We've got the grease channel facing the correct way the next step is to pop it in Ellen gets brought out the point of the grease uh, channel can you kind of put your fingernail in there Alan see that little grease channel that's lining up with the grease fitting maybe put it sideways so you can see where the grease zerk is kind of offset put the housing sideways so I can get a picture of the grease zerk no 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 get the, the complete housing no get turn it so I can see the see it like that okay see how that grease zerk is offset now if that grease zerk doesn't line up with the grease channel guess what you're getting no lubrication to your brand new bearing insert and guess what you're going to have a failure because you're not getting any grease in there okay now what we're going to do is insert the pipe put the pipe in there okay now since we got the pipe which is our leverage bar to now pop that bearing in and I'm gonna kind of zoom in here a little bit okay Ellen you want to bring her in perfect there you go insert the bearing it's um now you want to make sure that it's centered take a good look of it you want to take it out of the vise Ellen Take, take the housing out of the vise. Let's take a look at it. And, nope, you gotta go a little, little more. A little yeah, more. That. That's correct. You're not centered. Nope, put it in the vise. Okay, bring it up a little bit. Yep, there's a lot of pressure going on there. Yeah, you popped it out, but come down. How's it looking? Got her centered? Yeah, it's not quite yet. Yeah, that, that here bring it bring it over here that looks good that looks good now you got it centered in there the grease channels going the correct way the stake pocket for rotation of the bearing so it doesn't spin within the housing you can kind of see it peeking in there a little bit 
Now if you try taking that stake and putting it down here, you're going to jam that into the housing. You're going to have one heck of a time. Uh, so make sure that your stake pocket is, is, uh, is on the side. And typically, a little footnote here, not all bearings have that stake pocket. You, you, uh, you typically find it on your more high quality bearings. In fact, a little bit more information on the bearing. To make a high quality bearing, the, uh, the balls inside the bearing are very precise. They spend more money on uh, getting uh, quality. And then also, the, uh, there's a cage inside there. So each one of those balls are held in with a cage. And that will, as wear is starting to occur, this cage will hold the ball bearing so they don't jump each other to jam up a bearing. One last statement on greasing this bearing. We recommend greasing it every 75 hours or once a season. Now, in this particular application, you would have to remove the plug and insert a grease fitting. Then give it two shots of grease, only two. This is a triple lip sealed bearing. If you go more than two, uh, your chances are you're going to blow out the seals and uh, you certainly don't want to do that. So two shots of grease every 75 hours or once a year.